Hello friends of the Electrified Charging Fun and welcome to Electrified Speicher, your channel all around Skoda's e-mobility. In summertime, I tested out how efficient I am able to drive my Enyaq RS. So I went on my test course here, which contains some highway, some country roads, some driving through the city, even a small pass going up, going down. If you follow the channel for longer, you know my test course very well. And some of you really were exciting about how efficient it was possible to drive not only this second generation Enyaq I own, but also a first generation Enyaq, which was so close to the new model. And back then, in summer, I said, I will do the same in winter. And now, for the first time, we've got something we might want to call winter conditions. And this night, for the first time, we should see double digit minus degrees. And this is ideal to start on that route and to see how efficient I am able to drive in winter time. And if you're interested in that, then stay tuned. As with the summer test drive, for the winter test drive, the same rules apply. And those rules are the following. At no time on my drive, I am allowed to become a traffic problem, meaning I am not allowed to drive so slow I would like to when someone is behind me. For example, if there is a speed limit of 50 and someone behind me wants to drive 50, I have to go 50 as well. The rules are, whereas 120 in Switzerland kilometers an hour, I need at least to drive 100 or more. Slower only if the situation uh, needs it. When there is 80, I'm allowed to drive 60. When there's 60, 50, 50, 40, you get the rule of thumb. So yes, I am allowed to drive a bit slower, but not that much. And never should I become a traffic obstacle. It's still a drive with good sense and it's still a drive to get as fast as meaningful to my destination. The additional rule in winter time is that I will not prepare the car for any efficiency, meaning I will not use the my Skoda app to start the heating of the car before I start driving and I will not turn on the battery preheating for the drive. Both things are a topic for different video and we do that as well and take into account that I have my winter tires on my car. This is a Continental Winter Contact TS 850, the one I got with my first Enyaq still in good condition, which will also add to the consumption. And when we now look at the outside, it's one degree Celsius plus one degree still. The night should be around minus 10 and the battery temperature now is at 9.5 degrees Celsius. Let's see where this value will be tomorrow when we go on our test drive. Good morning. This is the perfect time to go on a test drive because it's still minus four degrees outside. And for those who do not know the test track, let me show you. This one here is our journey for today. And the first part here to Landquart is highway. Then we go on country road and on the pass up to Davos, then down the pass to Tuzis. Then from Tuzis to Kur, this is around 100 kilometers an hour. And all the way back here again is highway. And this route is perfectly mixed with everything you might experience on a typical travel, which is not only highway. We had minus eight degrees outside tonight, yet the car is not that cold. We have minus one degrees when it comes to the we have minus one degrees when it comes to the battery. Maybe this is because I'm next to our building here. I didn't manage to find another parking lot. So it's not that cold. I would like it to have, but at least it's a minus degree. And it's significantly colder than in summer. We also got every other value so we can really measure how the consumption is. We will take a look at this when we hit Davos. We will take a look at this in Tuzif, compare this to summer, and then make a conclusion at the end. First stop, Davos. And in Davos is the World Economic Forum, again. But I have no chance because this, today, this time, it is cold outside and I need to pick up that chance and drive. So yeah, we had a lot of traffic jams, a lot of control, and yeah. So it took a lot of time and you see it in the stats. And here you are. So the average speed really dropped down here in Davos to get through Davos. 
and we are at 33.3 kilowatt hours 100 kilometers when i parked here now it's going up because i'm standing here and this is a value i quite expected going in winter times up here to the Vos below 30 kilowatt hours 100 kilometers is really hard why because you have the path you're climbing up a lot of altitude also taking into account that we have minus 15 to minus 16 degrees here and you see it when you look at the battery the battery now even dropped to 0 0.5 degrees celsius it was one degree celsius and you can see it also in the fluid which is around the battery it's at minus 10 degrees so it is cooling the battery not heating it now we are going past the Vos down to Tuzis. In summertime, I managed to go down to Tuzis without losing energy or even getting a bit more energy out of it than putting into it through regeneration. But I doubt that I will do the same in winter. Second stop over, Tuzis. And consumption significantly dropped. We are now at 22.6 kilowatt hours, 100 kilometers, and far, far away from the 32 or even uh, 33 kilowatt hours we had in Davos. Yes, average speed still isn't high, but this is due to the road conditions. So when you drive down from Davos to Tuzis, you have some pass likely roads with a lot of bands. You've got some snow on the road and you have to watch how you drive. So be careful. Nonetheless, this is a good result for Tusis. I've did this test drive so often, I know what's a good result and what not. And the lowest degrees we had up in Davos was minus 20 degrees Celsius. And it keep that way until Tusis. So basically, we drove with minus 15 degrees all the time. And you see it in the battery temperature. It's at minus 1.5 degrees. The battery is not able to become any warmer. Now we are heading on a much faster part of the test drive, going 100 and later 120, and then we've got the final result at home. Back at home from the test drive, and we've got the results here. 21.3 kilowatt hours, 100 kilometers is the end result. Yes, average speed with uh, 56 kilometers an hour is not high, but you can also see here this is two, nearly three kilometers more than I normally drive. These were the reroutings in Davos because of the World Economic Forum. And this will make up for two or three kilometers an hour in the end. Not a bad result. I'm pretty happy. The battery never saw degrees over uh, zero. Currently it's zero degrees. Outside still minus 1.5 here where I live. And let's go to the conclusion. Well, that was a really interesting test drive and we've collected lots of data and there are some really curious results in it and the first one is already before I even hit the road it's after charging and the capacity of the battery or the energy content of the battery and before going on my test drive well after charging the battery had 95.8 kilowatt hours of energy content whilst it was at a temperature of 9.5 degrees Celsius. The next morning when the car was outside the battery cooled down to minus one degree. So we've got a difference of 10.5 Kelvin. And what happened to the energy content? It dropped to 45.7 kilowatt hours. Yes, we lost over five kilowatt hours of energy content. And this is not because the car heated in the night or was active, it was just standing outside. Well, this is due to the cold. This is due to the temperature of the battery. Cold reduces the energy content in the battery. Would you heat it up? then the energy content would come back. When it's cold, the chemical processes in the battery are slower and reduced and the electrolyte around the battery gets more viscous and therefore the inner resistance of the battery is increased and we get less energy out of it. And our battery management system takes, par, uh, takes account of this and calculates the possible available energy content new. It's only an estimation, it's not an exact value here. Why is there no change in the SOC? Well, the state of charge in both screens I showed you is 78.8%. Uh, because the total available capacity went down, yet the battery is still charged to nearly 80%. 
Therefore, the SOC remains the same. And this is why you get with the same SOC, not as much range as you have when the battery has a higher temperature. As a rule of thumb, you can say when the battery is at around zero degrees Celsius, you have 10 to 20% less capacity at a discharge rate of 1C. We already talked about uh, the discharge and charge rate in a different video. So look it up on the channel if you're interested in that. But just for explanation, this is the rate of the power you put on the battery in a ratio to the capacity. So 1C means that you charge or discharge the whole battery in one hour. When we drive, we do not discharge it that much. So we have a slower discharge rate and with that a lower capacity loss at that point. As we can see here, it's around six or seven percent. The battery management system makes this estimation and you get the new value. And therefore, when it does this, you might ask yourself right now, what would happen if I preheat the battery? So if I heat the battery up, would it increase the capacity? And will I have a less consumption on the whole drive. This is a task for another video and this video will come already next week. I already made it and it has some really, really interesting content. Now let's come back to the values we've collected. We used 34.7 kilowatt hours for the complete test drive of 160 kilometers with an average speed of 56 kilometers an hour. On that test drive, you barely have a chance to be over 60 kilometers an hour. So this is not a bad value, despite the fact that I use some of my efficiency methods, yet not very often. And if we look at that value more precisely, we could say we've got a discharge of 38.6 kilowatt hours, yet we've got a recharge through regeneration recuperation of 4.3 kilowatt hours. Um, those 300 watt hours, which are more on the consumption side is because I was standing still while recording at the end of my test drive. This leads to a total consumption of 21.7 kilowatt hours, 100 kilometers, which for me under those conditions is a perfectly fine value. Compared with my summer efficiency test drive, we are 8.2 kilowatt hours, 100 kilometer higher than in summer where I managed to do the test drive with 13.5 kilowatt hours. And another thing you see is that even at 80% state of charge, we do not have the full power available, nor the full regeneration. And this stays the same at every stop over. You saw the screen with the, uh, with the green and with the blue bar. It was never completely available due to the temperature of the battery. And yes, this is quite clear because we had at a maximum minus 21 degrees Celsius outside as cold and the battery was never warmer than two degrees Celsius. Also the fluid around the battery was at every point rather cold up to minus 12 degrees Celsius. And this also drains a lot of heat from the battery and through driving and the air passing those the battery pack and thus the fluid you already get an even more chillier effect on the whole system. Also in winter time, you need to heat more because you want to have it cozy and warm in the interior. I'll go with 20 to 21 degrees, but others go with 24 or 25. And also the, the air around the car is a bit more dense. Therefore we have a, a, a worse air drag coefficient. Then you have winter tires and you have more friction on the road. There are a lot of influential factors when it comes to driving in the winter, which affects your consumption. And you only notice this so much at, with an EV like the ENIAC because the EV is so efficient in using energy for driving. So you notice every little change. Never forget that your ENIAC with a 77 kilowatt hour battery is running on not even eight liters of diesel equivalent. And even in a normal winter, you get around 300 kilometers out of it. Of course, you notice 8.2 kilowatt hours, 100 kilometers, but the diesel equivalent of this is 0.84 liters. You would never notice this in your combustion car because your combustion car is so inefficient in using the energy for driving that 
in winter time you don't really notice it. It's a bit higher, not that much. Another factor, well the motor in the car is your heater. Basically it's a big heating system which is also capable of driving, not the other way around like in your EV. So uh, all the energy needed for the electrical heating of the interior or for the heat pump in your electric car doesn't affect your combustion engine. So this you can take out of the equation. Nevertheless, your combustion engine will never manage to do that test drive with 21.7 kilowatt hours 100 kilometers. This is 2.2 liters of diesel. It will use rather 85.8 or more kilowatt hours 100 kilometers. This is 6 liters of diesel. So also keep that in mind. Your EV is highly efficient even in winter times. Way more efficient than any combustion car at any time. What's now really curious is the next video. Does preheating help to be more efficient in winter times? This comes next on this channel next week. So now is the time to subscribe to this channel. If you liked already this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to support me, you can pass over a small donation via PayPal or use the YouTube thanks. I highly appreciate this because such videos are really intense to make and really time consuming. And therefore I hope we see each other in the next video and until then stay full of energy.